Yeah. So now that Montpellier is uh, very famous, uh, this is a place from where I come from, I have to say hi to my friends who are looking to me. Uh, it's late over there, it's 11.30 p.m., so I have a challenge to not make them uh, falling asleep. So please help me for, for that. Um, okay, so uh, just a quick question before we start. Uh, and especially in a country like France, do you have any idea about uh, the percentage of female entrepreneurs involved in uh, technology startups? Any idea? So, uh, yeah, this is what I thought actually. And when I find out, you know, the answer is in the range of, pff, it's dramatic, 8 to 12 percent. You imagine so? So really it's just unacceptable, right? In 2017 especially. And, um, but the good news is that I strongly believe that data science is definitely an area in which women can and do excel. And so therefore we have a, a huge opportunity to uh, change this dismal statistic, right? And so I'm very pleased to have been invited to present today uh, to this audience, right? And to see uh, how much potential you ladies represent to move the needle and uh, to make uh, a real change in the future. And I think a special thank to, uh, to Margot, really, to have the drive and the lead to make this event together. I think it's fantastic, it's vibrant, it's, it's inspiring. So congratulations, Margot, for, for that. So. <laughs> All right, so now let's start on uh, the true topic, which is a bit less sexy, but you will see we will try to make it. It's about oil and gas industry. But you will see it's quite uh, very passionate uh, uh, when you look at it in detail. Uh, here, what I want to, to give you today, actually, it's uh, the main uh, uh, foundation uh, for the, the digital transformation involving all the brave wor world of the data science. And whilst uh, all the, the broad implications are applicable to, in fact, any industry, uh, I will concentrate my talk on the oil and gas example from where I spent my career to date and uh, take some uh, uh, concrete example from both the uh, operational and financial side. Uh, I will finally uh, hand and uh, bring everything down to three key concepts that I would like you to take away from my presentation. Okay, so we are all very familiar now with this uh, technology story, right? We all talk about that all day. Uh, from a different manner, with all the data, more and more data coming uh, in real time, all the explosion of social media, etc., etc., uh, up to the uh, emergence, and uh, not to say invasion, of the artificial intelligence and, uh, and the machine learning. So, my point I want to make here is how industrial people will effectively get the benefit of all of that and how they will be capable to digest, integrate, and assim uh, assimilate all of these new technology into their uh, workflows, day-to-day -day organization, and get the benefit of all of that. So, uh, we can see that some of them have already been uh, very successful. If we look at our, uh, Airbnb, Uber, Netflix, they have all changed and revolutionized their industry, and um, for sure they have also completely disrupted they are old and conventional competitors, big time. So that was, I think, an interesting example, obviously, of um, the driveless uh, car, which is uh, probably an interesting uh, example for a revolution in the making uh, for the uh, artificial intelligence. So uh, here is the, the data as a new oil, for sure, and all industry are deeply impacted for it. And um, the drive is on, for sure, for more new business opportunities everywhere. And uh, through a more complete understanding and a faster and better decision that will spring from, uh, from that. So let me give you a rapid focus now on what the oil and gas stand in this uh, transformation and uh, the way, in fact, it has changed the way to work because this new world changed uh, the, the silos and the verticals in it, right? And impose a new way of working in a much more transversal manner, in a much more collaborative and integrative manner. So here is my first example in the oil and gas world. 
um, from the financial side first. So I recently joined the board of a young French uh, fintech company called uh, Keros. Keros was founded in 2016 uh, in uh, Paris, in New York, and in Berkeley. So uh, the point here was to realize that our industry, the oil and gas industry, has been uh, substanti uh, substantially blind for too long by not understanding how to best use their commercial data in a holistic manner. And Keros now effectively provides and develops predictive analytics products combining machine learning, advanced mathematics, and quantitative finance with petroleum engineering to bring new insight and transparency to those energy markets. So what you can see on the slide is one example of um, a recount prediction. Uh, and recount uh, is a key indicator for us to uh, estimate a potential uh, uh, activity, uh, production activity on the field. So uh, what Keros methodology brings is, the, is a clearly increase in the accuracy, providing some kind of uncertainty associated with it. And also a very key point is the much faster access to this information, okay? And uh, that is definitely a vital ingredient for, uh, to, for better understanding and predicting the oil price movement. So Keros is uh, positioning now as a clear game changer in this uh, financial side of the oil and gas industry, where uh, time and precision cost a lot of money. So now let's move on to uh, what we call uh, the upstream oil and gas world. Uh, this is where the exploration, production activity are uh, running. And um, this is, in fact, the Schumberger's world. Okay. And uh, with three key domains that we will cover the drilling, the production, and the reservoir characterization. That are the three key areas where we are working in. And uh, in drilling first, uh, you know the real-time data acquisition is, the, is a fact for life, for years, well, definitely. And um, from a data perspective, here the challenge is not really about the volume of the data, but the frequency of the data that we have to process, and our ability to run real-time computation at a subsequent duration. Okay. The overall goal is to improve the efficiency and safety of the well construction. And that is subdivided into two big objectives, which is first, a better well planning, and to get access to a better well planning, it's all about bringing all the data together into uh, in an intelligent and collaborative systems that can talk together uh, across the drilling disciplines between different experts and also uh, in, uh, across different drilling sites. That is really key. In well execution, our abilities uh, to uh, anticipate, to predict, to control uh, insecure situation is crucial, as you can imagine. And uh, in this world, the, um, the ambition is really to have fewer uh, people on site, okay, while reducing cost. Uh, and also, we all want to insist on the safety aspect, how to improve uh, the, the, the overall safety on the rig side. So all of that is about uh, data science. It's all about streaming in real time, huge amount of data back and forth from the rig to town and town to rig. And uh, this is a key element for us to take into account and to progress uh, to, to develop. So overall, we de definitely not want another Macondo to, to happen. So we are taking care a lot about all of those stories. That was a, test, a touch on drilling. Now, uh, if we move on the production uh, level, the overall goals are if to effectively maintain field pressure and productivity to maximize hydrocarbon recovery at uh, the optimum cost. That's really the, the goal. And a huge amount of production data are available today, even in today's wells, by the way. And uh, when you look at the number of wells, you have one, more than one million wells available. And uh, they are, most of them, they are equipped and they are using a type of artificial lift equipment. 
So it can be uh, uh, ESPs, electrical to merciful pumps, it can be rod pumps, it can be fiber optics, etc., etc. Anyway, all of this environment in production is a fantastic playground for uh, what we call the industrial Internet of Things and uh, also the, the new paradigm of um, uh, storing and computing at the edge, uh, distributed throughout the, all the production sensors across the field. And that has completely revolutionized the way to work. Uh, we can now, it allows us to, to control, to maintain, and to anticipate and to maximize, at the end of the day, the production of the field entirely, analyzing at, at the same time all the world together. So that is what we call, uh, more generally, asset optimization. And this asset optimization, where we, all the data land, it's called the surveillance center. The surveillance center, then, inside this, uh, uh, this area, these uh, centers, we can effectively run production forecasting. And uh, one very interesting uh, topic here, it's our ability today to run very complex uh, models on a daily basis. Right, and to use that to act and to take decisions almost in near real time, when it took us several weeks, even months, until re uh, the recent past. So now uh, let's talk about uh, subsurface and reservoir characterization. So here the volume and uh, the data uh, of the data is has exploded, both in quantity, in quality, etc. So in this area. 99%, it's 99% driven uh, by interpretation. The overall goal is to uh, qualify and quantify hydrocarbon reservoirs. What does that mean? Uh, it, it means to estimate rock and fluid properties as precise as possible. So, uh, data-wise, uh, a seismic campaign, we are talking here about uh, one, two terabytes of data per survey. Uh, when we look at the borough at the well scale, uh, we are more talking about gigs of data per hour. Okay, so it's given the number of, uh, of uh, seismic survey and wells. Obviously, you can imagine the number of data we have to process, and this level of, uh, of data is definitely critical now as the reservoirs are becoming more and more remote, and the reservoirs are becoming more and more complex to master. And one ex uh, challenges among some many others, um, is to run heavy computations. Okay? And therefore, HPC, high performance computing, and uh, GPUs are definitely required to run um, heavy and large computations, up to uh, the usage of uh, 5,000 nodes potentially used for, uh, to process seismic job. And um, with the elasticity, the required necessary uh, elasticity to scale up and down depending on the need. So that's uh, some update on uh, what happened in the uh, three key domains of the oil and gas industry. I want to leave you with one uh, key message here as a conclusion for this part, which is, uh, you know, oil and gas industry doesn't look really sexy. I have to accept it. Uh, but, come on, oil and gas uh, industry is definitely bringing a lot of data, okay? Uh, different type, different range, high frequency. Uh, you have to combine everything with uh, hundreds of physical measurements at different le resolution level. It can be high frequency, low, fre low frequency. Visualization-wise, we are playing in 1D, 2D, 3D, obviously even 4D, right? So it's a fantastic playground for data scientists. You should have the curiosity to look at it in more detail and try it, really. It's, a, it's great. Okay, so that was a few examples from my uh, previous experience and, um, and to, to see where the oil and gas industry stands in this adaptation to this new digital world. Uh, but uh, now the point is uh, technical progress are good and necessary to run in this transformation, but technical uh, progress are not sufficient, right? 
They are not efficient, and organization which, are, which will be successful in transformation will be the, uh, the organization that will be capable to look at all levels and all entities together. Okay, having, obviously, we can think about operational technical guides, but we, you have to have the uh, sales, marketing, HR, legal, accounting, etc., etc., all together if you want to have a chance to succeed. And last uh, slide is about to move one step further in this story. It's my three pillars that I would like you to take away. And, um, you know, from the, the previous example, we have seen that uh, main, uh, the main goals in the industrial activity are related to maximizing uh, asset optimization and uh, to uh, improving uh, the efficiency and uh, the effectiveness, the reliability, etc., etc. From the technical challenges, I won't come back here. I'll let you read all the new uh, technical aspects that the industrial people need to integrate in their legacy world, which is really not trivial, and it takes time to uh, move forward uh, efficiently. And finally, the point, Margot, that I would want it just to make, if, you, if I may, is about the culture, right? For me, each time I have uh, been involved in a, in a conference about digital transformation in the in industrial world, we teach us about technical. What is a cloud? What is Internet of Things? What is... You know what? Techni the technical stuff are just a matter of time to implement, in a way, right? For us, we are using that. F what is key is the cultural change. Without the cultural aspect, uh, you will likely fail. And uh, if you, you need your management to really instill this, uh, this change and to um, ensure that the executives, all the, at all the executive level, they, uh, they will perceive the necessity to evolve and to change their own mindset that was used to work and to embrace now also these new challenges in the new world to get up to date. So that's Thanks. it. Thanks Thank you. Much. I just Thank have you. to acknowledge uh, Schumberger and Keros for their participation to this, uh, to this presentation. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right.